They're home after a 5-1 trip out west, putting them in a wild card spot and in striking distance in the Central. Now the West comes to Kauffman Stadium, beginning with the second place San Francisco Giants. They have a wild card spot in the National League. Game one is next on Fox Sports Kansas City. Baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The Royals are back at Coffin Stadium for seven against two of the best teams in baseball, beginning with the San Francisco Giants. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the ballpark. I'm Ryan Lefevre. It was the second half last year that defined the Royals' season as they finished with the best record in the American League after the break. This year, the Royals lost their first four games after the break and then lost their first baseman to a break, literally. But the offense has responded, and the Royals have won 12 of their last 15. Now, the pitching's been great, but here comes the offense, scoring more than four runs per game. The Royals are 40 games above 500 this year. When they score four or more runs, we're getting some power, and the Royals are just surging in the standings. And if the season ended today, they would be a wild card team. Let's welcome in Rex Hudler. And not only is the offense coming around, HUD, but some bats that the Royals have been waiting on all year. That's right. And very rarely can a manager expect guys to get hot in that lineup, five or six of them. I mean, but they're in that spell right now where any guy at any given time could get that big hit. It's been exciting to watch. Tremendous road trip they came off of. Moustakas' swing, he's so natural, so loose. As a matter of fact, he got loose. Four home runs, 10 RBIs. Since July 22nd, this team is one of the best in baseball, has the best record, but it's the offense. Billy, oh believe it playing first base and now get the hit that's all coming on for him he's a ball player and even this guy nori aoki since july 22nd he's been raking 10 ribbies and his first career grand slam you gotta love that production but not to be outdone lorenzo kane who really quieted but right towards the end of the first half with his bat is starting to heat up again look at that average and also he's able to do it on the basis he's ripping some bags off causing some havoc getting good jumps over there really stirring up this offense like he can and now the giants who used to be all pitching just enough offense and very little power but the giants come to kansas city fifth in the national league in home runs Joe Goldberg's coming up next.
Gal and Billy Butler picking up the slack as a first baseman this year, hitting 349 with an on-base plus slugging of 996. Also had a very good road trip, all six games at first base, hitting 391. Well, welcome back to Coffin Stadium. Great to be home, but the Royals, well, they landed a little earlier than expected this morning at about 3.10 a.m., and then, of course, you got to turn around and play a game. Talking to Billy Butler about it, he said, look, you, you just have to find a way to get your rest. For him, well, he ended up getting to bed at 4.30, he said, got up at 8 to see his daughters, then went back to bed till 1. The guys came in later today, no batting practice. He said, you just have to get yourself ready. It's not ideal. Get in the cage, take some swings, get that body moving, and be ready for 7 o'clock. And that is where they are right now, ready for first pitch. Jason Vargas will take the hill when we come back. Baseball is brought to you by your Kansas City Chevy dealers. Make your move to Chevrolet today. By the Missouri Lottery. Try the new Lucky Sevens playbook. And by ATT UVerse. Find out what's possible with ATT. Call 1 800 Pick ATT. Mobilizing your world. Great to be home and. Great to soak in this mild summer weather in Kansas City. San Francisco Giants almost in an identical situation as the Royals. They're in second place in their division. They are three and a half games back. And they are tied with St. Louis for the wild card. So if the season ended today, the Royals and the Giants would have wild card spots. Bruce Bochy is in his eighth season as manager of the Giants, and they have won two World Series with him at the helm. Here's the Giants lineup beginning with Angel Pagan just coming off the disabled list. Those two guys at the top of the order, huh? those are your type of guys. High energy. They are. They're action guys. Now, they've only hit 248 against Southpaws this year with a record of 19 and 19, but the two of the guys that have good averages against lefties are Hunter Pence and Buster Posey, the two and three hitters. Our Kia starting pitcher is Jason Vargas. who will be making his second start tonight since coming back from the disabled list. He is Faced the Giants twice in his career, and he is 0-1. And in for a strike to Angel Pagan. Get that scalpel sharp as he can dissect both sides of the plate. He's mainly a, a fastball changeup type pitcher, uh, but he's also going to mix in uh, some occasional curveballs. But he loves to pitch inside against righties, and he needs to. Got to keep him off of his changeup. 
255 average against righties with 10 homers. Those guys have done the most damage as far as the long ball goes. Lefties have hit 282 with one homer. Coming right out, challenging Pagan, and the count is still 0 2. This guy has really been a difference maker since becoming a Giants regular. They are a lot better, the Giants are, when he is in the lineup. And to put some numbers to that, they are 14 games above 500 with Angel Pagan in the lineup, five games below when he is out. And it's back and out of play, still 0 and 2. Yep, he's an action type player. He's got good speed, slaps the ball all over the ballpark. He's an excellent bunner. You know, and here's a guy who didn't start switch hit until he became a pro. So, you know, he he had some, uh, took him a few years to develop as a switch hitter, but he's got it down now. One ball, two strikes. He was on the disabled list with a back problem. He went down at the end of June and was just activated yesterday. Just inside, if it was, two and two. Kerwin Danley is the home plate umpire. Well, I'm going to tell you what, that's a pretty good looking pitch just off the inside part of the plate. But once again, Vargas has to be able to pitch in there, keep him off that changeup away. Had him reaching for a change, still two and two. Pagan, he's doing all he can to fight off those borderline pitches. Giving him a tough chance here his first time around. That was not a strike, but he got Pagan to chase it. It took eight pitches, but Vargas begins the game with a strikeout. Defensively, they are the best in baseball as far as saving runs go, especially that outfield out there. They get to a lot of balls, but when you have a catcher like Salvador Perez that can control the running game and the team ERA, that's third best in the major leagues, he's a fine quarterback. You read those? Couldn't do it. Hunter Pence hates 70 degree weather. And he hates changeups by the look of that swing. Okay. Hey, Alcatraz, he thinks it's still active. One ball, two strikes. I wonder if he if he believes that that the moon is a planet. <laughs> Would that make you feel better? It would. He's an action guy, though. I'll tell you, he's exciting to watch. He's got really good speed. He's got some pop. He comes to play. He's got energy. Hikes those pants, legs all the way up, almost over his knees. He's got that throwback look. Matter of fact, that right leg, that, that, that pants are over his what knees. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> Back to back strikeouts both on change ups two down in the first inning. Yep, talking with Salvi before the game Salvi said that he's really a pleasure to catch everything's right on the corners you know you don't have to worry about blocking too many balls in the dirt when he when he catches Vargas. But the thing that Salvador likes most about Vargas is his tempo. He likes how he gets the ball throws it comes right off of that mound into the grass for the next pitch you know looking for the ball. Really is a. He's a guy who doesn't mess around out there, and when you do that as a pitcher, it, it keeps the defense on their toes. Buster Posey, who was the National League MVP two years ago when the Giants won their second World Series in three years. And he's down, no balls, two strikes. Vargas is just coming right at him. Now, Posey, he's got a nice uh, 320 average with four home runs out of his 13 against lefties, and he's a 344 hitter on the road. He's one of those bus drivers. No swing, one ball, two strikes. Vargas 
Remember in his first start since coming back from the DL on Saturday began with four perfect innings. He had Posey fooled in reaching. Still one ball two strikes. And he is not one of those pitchers that's a slow starter. He's ready to go with the first pitch. And he's only allowed two runs in the first inning all year. And a base hit in between Moustakis and Escobar. He waited a ball for a ball out over the middle. Two strike approach. Just tried to make some contact. Vargas on Saturday those four perfect innings Royals had some breakdowns on defense in the fifth and the A's turned that into seven runs They actually turned it into eight runs seven charged to Vargas. He only got one out in that inning. That was the only game that Oakland won in that series and it was the only game the Royals lost on the road trip. Ball one to Pablo Sandoval the Giants regular third baseman they'll use him as the DH tonight. Giants don't run they're last in the league in stolen bases so it's not going to be a lot of base running there. Boy his change ups good. They're not picking it up one ball one strike. Uh, you know and he cruised just like this in his last start. Against Oakland. Until the fifth inning. Everything came unglued for him. There's a Panda fan. Yep. Right over the inside, one ball, two strikes. There are four hitters in there tonight who have faced Vargas in the past. Sandoval, one of them. Two out of six. Pagan has faced him. Posey has faced him Sandoval and Michael Morse right side was wide open and Infante can't handle the ground ball they were playing Sandoval all the way over to pull Infante he was right in back at second base but he was able to get to that ball with no problem he just couldn't Find a handle on it. He'll be charged with an error. Just his sixth of the year. Normally reliable, very good hands. It, it hit look like, look like it hit him in the heel of the glove. Yeah, it didn't look like it did anything wrong. Didn't take his eye off of it. Didn't pull his glove up too soon. He'll tell you he just missed. But he'll also tell. Vargas, I'm sure when he gets back in the dugout, hey, I'll pick you up. Sorry about that. Michael Morse. Billy has given the Giants a big lift in left field. He is playing first base tonight. 15 home runs, 52 driven in. Seven of those 15 home runs have come against lefties. Two for 10 with a homer against Vargas. Big strong guy. He can hit some batting practice home runs with the best of them. Off the end of the bat, Alex comes up, slides, and he makes a catch. So the Giants put two on with two outs. The defense allows a runner and then saves the inning. Nice focus.
year. They have never been to eight games above 500. They are two and a half games back in the central. And are. In position for the second wild card as they pass the Toronto Blue Jays last night. And the Royals batting order tonight presented by your Midwest Ford dealers. And let's start looking at the guys here. Aoki hot Infante consistent Perez hot Butler hot Gordon. We hope that home run gets him going tonight. Kane hot Kratz has played very little Mike Moustak is hot and Escobar hold holding his own being consistent especially with that great glove and arm. So look when you get multiple guys that are hot in the lineup you're hoping that at least one or two of them can get to this guy. Madison bum bum Gardner. 13 game winner if he wins tonight he'll tie for the National League lead with wins. And he is coming off a shutout. That was Sunday at the Mets a two hit shutout. His second career shutout. And. This is kind of a. Throwback term this may not make sense to some of our younger viewers but his shutout. Was called a Maddox shutout, meaning he did it with fewer than 100 pitches. Complete game, 94 pitches. He's a strike thrower, only 37 walks and 154 innings coming in. He's mainly a fastball slider guy. He'll mix in some changeups and a few curveballs. His average velocity on his fastball is around 92. He's a guy that doesn't make many mistakes up in the zone. He's, he keeps a lot of his pitches down, which is what pitching coaches want. And it's a three quarter arm slot. Two and four seam fastballs. One ball, two strikes. Nori with a grand slam and seven RBIs during the road trip. He has the most experience of the four Royals in the lineup tonight who have seen Bumgarner. Hasn't been very fun, however. Going 0 for 11. Well, he can make it really tough on lefties with that arm angle. That's deceptive and also allows a little bit of two seam movement. Lefties are hitting just 248 with one homer. Righties, 249 with 11. So here's what the hitters are looking at. Got a nice leg kick, good separation, right over the rubber, good balance, and free and easy motion. But three quarters is, is kind of funky. Tied him up, still one and two. He has won four of his last five. Bumgarner mixes his pitches, more sliders and curves than his fastball. The league is hitting just 227 against his fastball. That's usually a pitcher's most hittable pitch. He doesn't throw it a whole lot. And in some ways, that's good for opposing teams. He doesn't throw his fastball as much as he does the other pitches. I hope he's done a nice job against lefties this year, hitting 345. Keeps his shoulder tucked nicely. Milking a few pitches. Just like Pagan did against Vargas in that first time up. Perez to the line makes the play in foul ground and then slams into the wall. We've seen a couple of good plays tonight by both teams left fielders one down in the bottom of the first. Yeah, and after two or three of those Aoki swings, Perez just kept moving towards that left field line closer and closer with each swing, and he's able to nab that. The Giants defense made 73 errors on the season. Buster Posey, he's a good catch and throw guy, 22.2%. Solid backstop. 0 oh, and 1 on Infante. He's faced Bumgarner before, two out of six. 51 RBIs and that leads the Royals and that ties his total from last year and just four RBIs shy of his career high. 
There's a change up now. He he likes to throw cutters in on righties too. He'll come in there very aggressive to the righties. And the, the cutter and the slider is a difference of about three inches, four inches. But that big curveball, he'll try to land that at the right leg, right back leg of the right-handed batter. Two and one. Likes to be aggressive against righties coming in a lot like Vargas. Three balls one strike. Kerwin Danley looks like he's got a pretty tight strike zone tonight. Now Major League Baseball they, they want to speed up the, the games. All they do is have a little chat with the umpires and tell them to start calling borderline pitches around the corners. Hit hard in the left field. That'll roll deep. And Omar Infante is at second base with one out. He'll take that 15th double on the air. Nice piece of hitting. He went right down and got it. Looked like a breaking ball. Talked about the Kansas City Royals are, are four and one in their record against the last five games against left handed starters. So they've been really finding a way to get it done against the lefties and they've been some really good ones too. Bumgarner is not the first good lefty they've seen in the last couple of weeks. Now Salvador Perez he drove in seven during the road trip. And those seven. Coming in the final five games. And he's after the first pitch. No balls and one strike. Your Kansas City Honda dealers bring you the MTP of the game. The most trusted player brought to you by the most trusted brand Honda. Oh man. When Salvi gets a ball that he can handle middle in he's been pulling most of them. Now he will go to the opposite field if you keep pitching him away 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 he'll figure it out but he's right up there on the plate. And there's an aggressive inside pitch now with a runner at second base the Royals runners will have to watch Bumgarner because he's got a little inside move left handers they try to look like they appear to start home but they go ahead and just spin around and try a pickoff move at second. So he has that. In his repertoire. Got a pretty good step off move to first base as well. Fairly quick home. That is just foul. One and two. He was talking about that turning on that pitch inside. That's right. He's looking in there. Now, Joaquin Arias, the third baseman, he's already on the line. So you know if it stays fair, he would have been able to get to that ball. He is really guarding that line heavily. Kansas City Royals hitting 266 now with runners in scoring position. Salvador, not too bad. He was great last year with an average with runners in scoring position. And he's really warmed up since the break. Those numbers are down based mostly on what he did in the first half. As you just said, Hud, he was second best to only Miguel Cabrera last year with runners in scoring position. Bumgarner, he, he's a big boy, 6'5, 235, and he's a good athlete. He's not just a left handed pitcher that doesn't have much athleticism. Three and two. They're making him work. Nice to see him. And he's, he's looking at some pitches, trying to get a gauge on him. So he's a 245 with three of his 13 homers against lefties. And as is the case against the best pitchers in the league, oftentimes if you're going to get them, you better get them early before they settle in and find their rhythm. It's important to score first against these Giants. When they when the Giants score first, their record is 46 and 12. Best mark in Major League Baseball. When they don't, when the opponents score first, they're only 16 and 41. So Salvi wants to get the early lead. Hit right to Arias, and he might have been using his glove as a shield as much as a 
method to catch the ball. That was a missile hit right to his chin. Yeah, but like we said earlier, he's sitting on that line. He was right there. Perfect defense there. Catch it out front, those line drives. You don't catch it in the back, you, you lose sight of it. So with one out, a double to left, a line out to third. Two good swings for Infante and Perez. And now Billy Butler. Curveball is low. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one, folks, to look forward to Miller time later in today's game, brought to you by Miller Lite. Well, the curveball was low, but it was called a strike. And you can see what Billy thinks about that. Whoa. Well, I don't know. <laughs> it looked good on Fox tracks, but. Well, umpires will tell you it's where he crosses the plate, not where he catches it. That's outside. One and one. Anyway, if the umpires, you know, if the Major League Baseball got together with them and said, hey, look, start giving the borderline pitches, hitters would, would realize that they're doing it and they'd be swinging more. Well, there'd be more outs and more swinging. It would move the game well, away. They do that every five years, and we see bigger strike zones in spring training, and then it lasts for about two months of the regular season. The hitters start griping, and they just go back to their old ways. Two balls, one strike. I mean, they've kind of been there, done that with the strike zone. That's a pitch right there where you know you really feel for a pitcher because if Billy hits that ball at the ballpark you say well he made a bad pitch. Yeah. But if that's the case it should be called a strike. It's belt high. Right. You yeah, better believe can't it. have it both ways. Mm -hmm. Billy looked like he was ready for that pitch. He missed it two balls two strikes. Royals were just one at bat. Under 500 with runners in scoring position in Arizona. It's about every time they got somebody on, they got them home while the Diamondbacks left an army of players on the bases. Blasted to left field. Billy Butler hits a two run first inning home run. in a hurry and got loud Billy Butler seventh home run on the season he barreled it I mean to tell you this is where he's hit the last couple home runs here at the K way up over the Royals bullpen and that nice little section of seats there as he was able to meet that perfectly big lift he's starting to recognize that swing thankfully Getting Billy Butler hot is like adding a, an extra bat in that lineup that they haven't seen. He's playing both sides of the ball at first base. Vargas will take that nice little cushion. Royals jump out first. Slider for a strike, one and one to Alex. Billy started the road trip 0 for 7. In the first two games in Oakland. Since then, he is 10 for 17. With a lot of balls hit like the one he just hit. Not all out of the ballpark, but hard hit. How about that double he hit yesterday? That 0 2 breaking ball that was down is like he had a two iron in his hand and doubled into the left field corner. You know, Bump Gardner may not be fooling a lot this first time through the order because three out of the four batters have absolutely barreled him. Infante's double was a nice double on the line. Salvador Perez almost ripped the lips off of Arias at third base. And so he's not fooling too many Royals here. Alex strikes out Posey down to first to complete the strikeout. So the Royals knew they had to get on Bumgarner early, and they did. A one-out double, a two-out home run, and the Royals lead 2-0. Oh, man, that'll leave your ears ringing. Nice sound.
question of the day. The Royals have played the Giants three series before this one. They've won all three, two games to one. Last time they played was here in 2008. Who was the winning pitcher in that deciding game? Kyle Davies, Gil Mesh, Ron Mayhay, and remember Yasehiko Yabuda? I know you don't. Nope. I've heard of him, but didn't see him pitch. Because he spent most of the time in the minor leagues. Two starting pitchers out of that bunch. I have no idea. Ron Mayhay. That's my guess. Okay. Lefty. Joaquin Arias. He played in Omaha in 2011. He was with the Royals in big league camp. Never got to the Royals at the big league level that year. Three balls, one strike. He is at third base tonight with Sandoval getting a chance to be the DH. They're not hurting anything on defense with this guy. Ooh. Alex gets turned around and that ball sails over his head. Arias is at second base with a leadoff double. Yep, he's a good fielder. He can play anywhere in the middle. Shortstop, second base, and then occasional third base. And he's a very aggressive hitter, but he took a pitch there that was caught a little bit too much to the plate. Didn't have enough to get it out. But good enough for just his third double of the year. And now Vargas will face Matt Duffy. Duffy was sent back to the minor leagues just a couple of days ago and Brandon Belt came off the disabled list and then Belt was back for a game. He had been out with a concussion and then having more concussion like symptoms so they put him back on the DL today and recalled Duffy. That's through the left side for a base hit. Arias will hold it third and the Giants have runners at the corners with nobody out. It's not what what Vargas wanted. Typically your team gives you a little lead. You want to come out and get him one two three if you can and keep the momentum on your team's side. But right here Duffy didn't try to get him over to the right side. He said you know what I can get him over with a base hit to left there. Tim Flannery third base coach very active very aggressive for coach. So his 18th year of coaching third base he, he knows all about Alex Gordon's arm. There's no way he's going to send Arias. Juan Perez plays at left field. Michael Morris is the. Regular left fielder, but he's at first with Belt on the disabled list, so that opens up a spot for Perez. Perez made a nice play on Ioki in the bottom of the first inning, making a running play in foul ground and bumping into the padded wall. And that's hammered into the left field corner. And foul. And that was loud. Little bit too much top hand by Juan Perez and he was able to hook it. He's got some power you saw just there. This guy can play second base in all three outfield spots. Pretty valuable guy. Quick runner. He's got a little sock. But if you ask Vargas if he'd rather give up a little ground ball double play and give him the run, he'll probably say, yeah, this early in the game, I'll take the two outs. And Bochy says, you know what, I, we think that that was a home run. Well, it sure looked foul, that first replay that we saw. and Bruce oh. Bochy, he didn't even go out. And look back into his dugout for a signal. He just came out and 
asked for the challenge so he could be burning his challenge right away. Maybe we have to look at it again but the first one looked like it was clearly foul. Yeah but you know if he wins it it's the three runs. I mean it's a big challenge. So he says he, he probably thinks it's worth it. Hard to see there it is. That ball right? it, was, it, I mean, looked, it looked it looked foul. It, it, it looked foul from that view there. And you can always tell right now when the hitter does not leave the box. And or Juan, complain Juan Perez he hit it and he just kind of leaned to try to help it with the body language but he never left the box really so he, the hitters will tell you if it's fair or foul. Well OK call is confirmed. I mean I didn't even see Tim Flannery the third base coach react negatively. Oh, hitters usually know they'll tell you by the whether they run or not. Giants been pretty good they're 20 and 12 when it comes to challenges. Bruce Bochy says challenges we don't need no stinking challenges. Two balls two strikes. There's the equalizer. Vargas has induced 10 double play balls this year. That's why you try to stay low with your pitch with your pitches so the hitter when he does hit it if he doesn't lift it he's going to hit it at somebody. Good changeup. That's three strikeouts for Vargas, all with changeups. And that's big with runners at first and third and nobody out. Now he'll take the ground ball double play. That really had some fading, dipping action in that ball there. And and Vargas is deceptive to a hitter when he throws that changeup because it comes out of the same arm speed as that fastball, same arm slot. And it's it's trick. There's some trickery involved, no doubt. Very deceptive pitch, and one of the best pitches a left-hander can have, especially making it one of your best pitches. Brandon Crawford, Giants shortstop, no balls, one strike. Now with the new rules, similar to. The old rules when it comes to home run calls, the managers can just request a challenge and the umpires can grant that. But that was announced in the press box as a Giants challenge. So we'll see if there's some clarification there that, because that would make sense to me if that was just the umpires. Granting Bruce Bochy a second look at a home run because he came out right away, no looking back into the dugout. But again, up here it was announced that that was a Giants challenge, not an umpire's huh. review. Yeah, initially I thought it was going to be an umpire's review. So I wouldn't be surprised if that was changed because the one thing that I really noticed when he went out there is he was never looking back into his dugout mm -hmm. for anyone to give him a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Brandon Crawford is doing pretty good against lefties. He's hitting 318, three home runs out of his eight. And he's got a 284 average with runners in scoring position. How about that? Throw down to third. Close. Oh, man. Down goes Gary Cedarstrom. Oh, man. I guess Trevor Vance better cut the grass out there. Cedarstrom, he might have caught a, a blade of grass. Yeah, fans, they like the effort. You know, I mean, sometimes an umpire down there will hardly make a call. And if you're in the upper deck, you don't know if he's saying out or safe. But <laughs> Gary Cedarstrom, man, he used his legs to make that call. Oh, man, glad to see he's healthy. Sometimes. Oh, 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 oh. oh man, he could pull a muscle mm -hmm. very easily. But you know what? Great attempt on the pickoff throw. Could have been an ankle, could have been a groin. Yep, could have been some few things. Good to see him, all right. Yeah. 
A little bit inside. Three balls, two strikes. Struck him out, and that was a changeup. Four strikeouts, all with that pitch. And now first and third and two down. Vargas knowing how to execute when he has to. He challenged him, but he kept the ball down. Execute those pitches with runners in scoring position and get yourself out of jams. That's a mark of a solid starting pitcher. Ball one to Pagan. He opened the game, striking out in a changeup. Vargas struck out Pagan and Pence to begin the game, then a single, then an error. And then Alex Gordon made a sliding play on Morse to get out of that inning. And now in this inning, a double and a single to put runners at the corners with nobody out. And Vargas has struck out Perez and Crawford. Just needled the outside corner. One ball, one strike. They are making him expend some pitches, though. 45 already. One ball, two strikes. Now it has been corrected. It was a crew chief review on the foul ball hit by Juan Perez, which was a couple of feet away from being a three run home run. So, first announced as a Giants challenge. That makes better sense now that it was just a crew chief review, which yeah. on home run calls, either correctly called over the barrier or fair or foul so no challenge used by the Giants and now a bloop into center but Kane was playing shallow Jason Vargas with runners at the corners and nobody out wiggles out of it two strikeouts and a fly ball to shallow center two nothing KC. in Overland Park and by your Midwest Ford dealers visit your Midwest Ford dealers .com.
Well, I don't know how it looks in your living room, but I don't know if I've ever seen Kauffman Stadium this green this time of year. I mean, once we get into late July, early August, mid August, the grass is green, but not like this. But then again, everything is green around Kauffman Stadium with this mild summer so far. We're still getting some rain. Been special, really beautiful. Trevor Vance, he replaced the infield grass over a month ago. Expecting heavy heat in this summer. Slice to right center and Pagan makes the play. One down in the bottom of the second inning as we take a look at tonight's Toyota League leaders. Royals are seven games above 500 overall, but when you look at series, they are nine games above 500. They have had six sweeps this year, including the just completed series with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Royals trying to get to eight games above 500 for the first time this year. Ed Ghost has Eric Kratz in there as the designated hitter. Down in the count, no balls, two strikes. Kratz has a little bit of experience against Bumgarner, having played the past few years before this year in the National League with the Phillies. He is one for three. Only got four at bats during the road trip. And all those in the Oakland series. Well, this would be his first career start as a designated hitter. It's not the most fun. Especially if you're not used to doing it because it sometimes can go 20 30 minutes in between at bats got to find something to occupy your time. Second strikeout for Bumgarner two down in the second inning. Well just a few weeks ago this would be a Danny Valencia start. It's a tough left hand pitcher. And maybe even. More recent Christian Cologne but with the way Moustakis has been swinging the bat lately. Against righties and lefties Ned Yost keeps that bat in there and Moustakis thought about. Dropping one down to the left side and he takes strike one. Well Moose is hitting 130 off of lefties with three out of his 14 home runs. Versus southpaws. But you never know. So those are his overall numbers. Hit the ball hard last night against Vidal Nuno, the Diamondbacks lefty. One ball, two strikes. Five out of 13, four RBIs. And all four of those RBIs coming in the game on Wednesday. Drove in every run for the Royals in a 4 3 win. That'll land in the crowd. Still one ball, two strikes. Slight breeze here at the K blowing in from right field. We'll see that very often. Now Moose gets a hold of one. That wind's not going to hold him. But most of the time the winds are, are blowing from the right field foul pole to the left and sometimes from the left to right. But very often you see him coming in. That is coming in out of the north northeast which would explain why it's cooler than normal. Still one and two and when you mention especially this time of year the wind blowing from right to left that's that wind out of the south. And when you're talking about early August here well you're talking about temperatures in the mid to upper 90s but. Not tonight and some cool air out of the north. 
That pitch stayed up, and Moustakis goes into center field for a two-out single. Fouled off three in a row down in the count. And he's on with two down. That was nice. Kept his shoulder in and went with that pitch. On his way to a third consecutive multi-hit game. And he's up over 200. If you have a classic car that you want to show off at Kauffman Stadium, come out to the ballpark Sunday for our annual Cruise to the K Classic Car Show. The show will begin at 8 a.m. and the winning vehicles will have a chance to parade around the Kauffman Stadium warning track as part of the pregame ceremony. For available ticket packages and how to register, go to royals.com slash car show. 0-1 oh on Escobar. Moose milks some pitches, fouled some off. Look comfortable. Look at how his weight's going back. He loads up with his hips, soft step, kept his head right on the ball, right to it up the middle. Big hit, first at bat for confidence for Moose. One and one on Escobar. Escobar, he's told me the other day that he's never seen a left handed pitcher that he didn't love. Hitting 314 off of Southpaws this year with one homer. Esky looking to do some damage. Been a long time since he's hit one out of the yard. Soft liner to short. Crawford gets it to second in time to get Mustakis. Ed Yost comes out of the dugout as the Royals go to the phones. Mustakis stays at second base, and Ned Yost ended up just getting a little bit of exercise and heads back to the dugout. And that was the right call. The game break takes us to Yankee Stadium. Jason Kipnis looking for one and gets none. A pair of Yankees come around to score. That made it three to one, and now it is five to one at New York on top of Cleveland. And as we return to action, Vargas facing Hunter Pence. And really the familiar face on the Giants side as far as Royals fans go. And we'll do more on these signs in just a little bit and further explain it. But the one recognizable guy they have over there is Jake Peavy. So many years with the White Sox and recently the Red Sox. I had a chance to talk to Peavy today. We won't see him pitching and starting in the series. But he was with the Red Sox when the Royals had that miserable series in Boston a few weeks ago and is really impressed how they've been able to turn things around. And well, that's going towards the Lorenzo Cain triangle hunt. One's going to fall right in in front of Ioki. But as far as Peavy goes, Ryan and and Rex, there he is. Strange to see him in a Giants uniform, but 
he's always liked the young players on this Royals team, and he said that it is an incredible sign when they played as poorly as they did in Boston, and he saw it. There wasn't a whole lot there. To be able to turn things around and go 12-3, and three, Jake says, is a sign of a team that is figuring things out, that is maturing. Since not a lot of teams can handle that one, not young teams. And he really sees this as a great sign for the Royals going forward, that they can handle that adversity and that pressure. And oh, by the way, Bruce Bochy asked him for a scouting report before the game, since he knows him better than anyone. And he said, Skip, you better have the lead after six. <laughs> That's true. Now, what about those signs, Joel? All right, well, we're going to go out there and visit with some of those folks in a little bit, but I could give you at least a little background how this thing started, because I talked to Hunter Pence about it today. And, you know, in this world of social media, well, he put something on his Instagram account the other day, and it was a Seinfeld reference. If you've watched Seinfeld, you'd get it. If not, maybe not. But it basically said, these pretzels are making me thirsty. And that, that was a reference to a Seinfeld episode. And then a bunch of fans came back the next day in New York. Hunter Pence puts ketchup on his hot dog. That's another Seinfeld reference. And Hunter Pence eats pizza with a fork. Kind of a Seinfeld reference. They were, it was with candy bars in Seinfeld. Then Hunter Pence prefers baths. Hunter Pence hates bacon. And this thing took on the hashtag. And then Hunter, he said that he loves this. This is his personality. He likes to get engaged in this. So he started answering back with some of his own. Now, there was this one also. Hunter Pence can't parallel park. Well, this was his reply. Hunter Pence, yeah, he can't parallel park. He did tell me he hates parallel parking. And then there was one about his not returning library books. And so his response to the not returning library books was Hunter Pence returns library books before they're due so others can enjoy them as well. There are dozens of signs here at Kauffman Stadium. It doesn't matter what city you're in right now. If Hunter Pence is there, the social media world is taking over. We'll be out there in a little bit. So he's got a little Jeff Francoeur in him. Yeah, he does. Engaging with the crowd on the road. Except I don't think there would have been a Jeff Francoeur hates bacon sign. No nope. the way he connected with the guys on the bacon Tuesdays in Oakland. Yeah it's always fun <laughs> when you can interact with the fans. Believe me that's that's a lot of fun it, it, especially if the player loves it he, he's OK with it. Posey single to left first time up. Pence was running and it's fouled away. Pence 10 for 15 in steals this year. Okay. <laughs> That's from a Giants fan. Yeah. You know, it makes the, the fans feel like they belong, like they're a part of it. They're engaged. That's beautiful. Center field, the ball carrying, even though it's hit into the wind. Pence was almost all the way to second base. So he goes back to first, and that's one down in the third inning. Yeah, he read that right. Pence did. If he drops the ball, you're at second base, you got a chance to score. Posey, he reached out, had some good body lean out that way, and he barreled it pretty well. That's why he carried out there. Sandoval reached on an air by Infante in the first inning, but that didn't hurt Vargas or the Royals as Vargas got the next hitter, Michael Morse. He's a free swinger. He's grounded into 11 double plays so far this season. Right handed, he's been struggling. He's hitting 191. Left handed, the Panda hits 325. Oh and two. Sandoval when Giants won the World Series in 2012 he was a World Series MVP. And he is a free agent after this year.
nickname Kung Fu Panda. If you've seen the animated movie about the panda bear who becomes a superhero. <laughs> Barry Zito his former teammate gave him that nickname and the fans jumped all over it. Two and two. A panda head with giants colors. And quite a few of those here tonight. Right side and past Infante. Pence is going to try and go to third. And Aoki almost got him. And Mustakis tried to con Pence into thinking there was no throw. He was just standing there very casually and tried to apply the late tag. That's a great move by a third baseman. The base runner's backs to the ball. And the third baseman stands there like nothing's going on. The ball's not coming. Then at the last minute, you react and catch a tag. Bump right on the helmet. Whoa, he come off the bag. Ned Yost, if he can get out of the dugout, he does. And he did it right before Morse got into the batter's box. Hunter Pence may have come off the bag just long enough. So to make it official, Ned has to go out and talk to the Umpire who made the call. It's Gary Cedarstrom, the crew chief. Well, that's why nowadays with the replay, that when you get that throw on a runner, you hold it on him. At any particular time, he can come off the base. So it's important that you do that. And times before the replay, you made the tag and and you know you got the call one way or another. But nowadays you just it's really easy just to keep that ball on the runner. And as a runner, you got to be aware of that as well. Bruce Bochy came out as well and he's still in front of his dugout and consulting with some of the Giants that might be in charge of communicating with their replay official and his challenge might be and I think if he were to go there he would be wrong. Okay, there's the tag nobody on the base right there see that that replay they're showing the fans here at the cave shows Pence. Not on the base and Moose with the tag on him with his helmet. But Bruce Bochy might challenge. We'll see if the batter was in the box. I don't think Michael Morris was in the box. I think Ned Yost got out in time. I didn't think Aoki had a chance at Pence. And when he threw that ball, he let go a good one. It wasn't a one hopper. If, if he one hops it, it wouldn't have been close, but he threw it all the way on the air uh, in, in the fly. And was gunning for his fourth outfield assist. And that, that'll hold up if the call gets reversed. See, there's that's when we notice on our replay. So see, Ned Yost comes out, Vargas is on the rubber, Morse is not in the batter's box. Now we learned this very early in the season that remember there was a play at first base where the Royals felt like the play went against them unjustly and that Eric Hosmer had kept his foot on the bag and they watched the replay and he did keep his foot on the bag but while they were watching the replay they noticed the ball came out of his glove. So you don't just when you challenge one thing the umpires back in New York they look at everything. And so this might be taking a little longer because they might be checking to see if Morse was in the box. Out at first base is the call. And now Bruce Bochy comes out of the dugout and he may question the timing of the challenge. So it's a single to right and 9 5 Aoki to Mustakis to get Pence. And that is Aoki's fourth outfield assist. And it was a beauty. Now Bochy is saying Morse, like you were saying, Rhino, he, he's saying that he Morse got in the box. 
And the fans are grumbling right now. They want Bruce Bochy thrown out because you can't argue a replay, but you can challenge a challenge. And so Bruce Bochy is not talking to Gary Cedarstrom about the call or the replay, we assume. I think he was asking about the, the timing of the challenge, and therefore he is allowed to have some words with Cedarstrom. Dueling replays we've got in tonight's game so far. So that's replay at its best for the Royals this year for Bill DePlissy to notice that last second and had to make the quick call to the dugout. You could see the Royals respond and Ned Yost got out into the dirt before Morse got into the box. Big curveball in for a strike to Michael Morse. Ned's 19 and 10 now. Billy DePlissy, who is his coach inside, doing a great job for him. Morris lined to left, and Alex took a hit away from him and an RBI with a sliding play. Sixty fifth pitch coming. One and two. That's an excellent pitch there to keep the righties off of his changeup and fastball. That's why it's good to have three if you're a starting pitcher, maybe four. Because you're going to face these guys two, three, sometimes four times in the lineup if you go deep enough in the game. But with Vargas's pitch count like it is. And he, they're hoping he can go five. Base hit to right field, so that challenge is big. That would have scored a run. As more singles, and now first and second with two down. Salvador Perez he's letting the infielders know what base he's going to throw to if they do attempt to double steal. Arias takes a strike he doubled to left field in the second inning leading off the second inning he got to third with nobody out after the Duffy base hit and didn't score. Giants stranded four in the first two innings and now have two on with two out. One and one. Giants are on the board as Sandoval scores. Morse goes to third. That is the second double for Arias, and it's a two to one game. A little two out rally they're putting together on Vargas. One is going to the opposite field. And he's looks like he got a ball out over the plate. Two runners in scoring position for Matt Duffy. This is just Duffy's 12th at bat. Spent most of the year in the minor leagues. And he grounds it to the right side, and that's through. One run is home. Here comes Arias. Aoki's throw right on the money, and Sal tags him out. The Giants tie the game. Aoki with his second assist of the inning. And because of his second throw, and because of his first throw, the game is still tied. Great accuracy. Perfect.
Sergeant Al Cerny jumped from a plane at Normandy on D-Day and fought in the Battle of the Bulge with the 101st Airborne Division Screaming Eagles. Later, while moving with the 101st in Germany, he was wounded by mortar fire, spending five months in hospitals in Europe and was awarded the Purple Heart. He is sitting in the Buck O'Neill legacy seat at tonight's game. After the war, Sergeant Cerny returned to Kansas, where he dutifully served in many community organizations. Today, he continues to tell his story and work with various veterans groups and students. Thank you for your service, Al. And he got a standing ovation when he was shown on Crown Vision earlier in the game tonight. By the way, earlier today, the Royals became an official supporter of the Military Order of the Purple Heart, the only organization made up solely of combat wounded veterans. And in a ceremony earlier today, Royals Vice President Toby Cook read a proclamation and the Royals received this plaque, the National Military Order of the Purple Heart flag, the local flag, and supporter pins as Aoki goes down. And of course, we're talking about the Purple Heart when he gets drilled. Yesterday was National Purple Heart Day, and the Royals became one of the first American League teams to become an official supporter. This is the fifth time Aoki's been hit this year, and like Bumgarner got him pretty good. Now he is smiling, he's laughing with his teammates a little bit. But okay. I mean, uh, he left his feet. Let's hear him. Sometimes hitters, they start screaming before it even hits them because they know it's coming. Sometimes it helps with the pain, even before it comes. You see it, you can't get out of the way. So we had a member of the Screaming Eagles in the Buck O'Neill legacy seat <laughs> and a Screaming Eagle at the plate. That's right. At least we heard that's it. what I would imagine what a Screaming Eagle would sound like. Yep, doesn't feel very good when you get hit right there. Now, what does a screaming eagle sound like? <laughs> right? I mean, ouch. <laughs> Ball went outside to Omar Infante. Talked about. Bumgarner. He's got a step off move over there to first base. I'm sure Aoki's well aware of that. Fairly quick home with his slide step. Out to Duffy. Out at second and out at first. And again, the Royals go to the phones. They have used a challenge successfully. So they could use it again. Don Wakamatsu on the phone with Bill DePlissy. He's out. And the Royals agree with Mark Ripperger, the first base umpire. Infante, he tried to hit that hole. Good call. <laughs> I think we should have a some sort of a video showdown between Sam Abramson and Bill DePlissy. That'd be okay. a good Hivey Royals live segment, wouldn't it? Yeah, you'll have to tell them what those guys do. Billy's down there on his own. Sammy's with us every game, but here at home, he has Jeff Graham and Nick Danzo helping him out in the truck.
Salvi being patient. 2 and 0. Oh, it's not an automatic swing. Line to left. Ooh. Hit very hard. That ball almost carried on Perez, and he realizes he's lucky to make the catch. Second time that Sal has lined out tonight. Royals are scoreless in the bottom of the third. Well, now that's not very nice. I mean, you get time out in my house if you use that word. Yeah, we don't use that around our house either. But those guys must be buddies. Remember to tweet your photo with appropriate language to hashtag Casey fan photo for a chance to have it shown during tonight's game broadcast. Brought to you by AT&T. Ball one to Juan Perez. He struck out in the second inning. A couple of pitches almost after almost hitting a three run home run. And now base it into center field. That's nine hits for the Giants. So the two throws by Aoki are huge. Throwing out. Pence at third base in the third inning and Arias at the plate in the same inning. Difference is is that Vargas is just not on the corners like he wants to be in that last inning in this inning here he's giving him a little bit too much out over the middle. And they're making some contact when he's on and he's scalping and he's dissecting that plate. You, it's hard to hit him. Crawford. Struck out swinging at a change in the second inning. Looked like it was going to be a long night for the Giants after the first two innings. Vargas struck out four, all with his change up. He is at 73 pitches already. He only threw 75 on Saturday at Oakland. Ned Yo said that in his second start now since going on the DL, that he could go to 100 pitches. They were going to limit him to about 90 on Saturday. Fouled away by Crawford. No balls, two strikes. Now Vargas has the ability to turn this around and. But how about last night and Ned Yost confirmed during the pregame show tonight. But Jeremy Guthrie had 54 pitches in three innings. And Ned was saying he was thinking about do I have to go to Bruce Chen. What am I going to do. And then 
He threw 55 pitches in his next six innings yes. through a complete game. Yeah, you know that, that's a crazy number there. Those are you, you don't usually see that or hear that. If he's got that many pitches early in his first few innings, you can you can expect him to keep doing that and get out of the game. But he was just really good on the corners. Second consecutive start where he was solid, but he went nine last night. Save that bullpen. But you know Ned's got to be thinking about that with Vargas here now. All these pitches he's throwing up there. So, but you know you got a well-rested bullpen. No concerns, I don't think. Well, I was big last night not to have to use Davis or Holland. The Royals got a run in the ninth inning to stretch their lead. Only needed Davis and Holland once in the Arizona series. Only needed Wade Davis once in the Oakland series. Greg Holland twice. Just got a piece of it. Still 0 2 on Brandon Crawford. Yeah, but he's staying inside on Crawford. Rounded to Escobar. The Royals get the out at second base. Perez is out and Crawford's at first with one down. Vote for the Royals player of the month at rallyhouse.com slash Royals and you'll be entered to win a majestic prize pack from Rally House. Royals took some heat when they didn't make a significant move before the trading trading deadline and Dayton Moore was very clear in his press conference after the deadline that if the Royals were going to jump significantly on offense after the break they were going to have to do it in house and some guys have responded to that call here we are talking about Billy as a potential for player of the month in August still early. Mike Moustakis has turned around his slow first half, which sent him down to Triple A for a week. Nori Aoki's coming around, not just getting on base. Nori's been an RBI machine lately. Lorenzo Cain, the same. And you know, all, all Dayton Moore wanted was just the offense last year and this year, just to hit up to their normal numbers. Not to do anything above that. He's not asking for guys to have career years. And with the addition of Aoki and Infante, he, he thought that that would really help him at the top of the lineup, and it has. But they're still right just under, averaging just under four runs per game. And their pitching has been solid, just like last season. Two balls, one strike. And it's easy for us and the fans to wonder why a move wasn't made. It's a very important year for the Royals. But it's also interesting just hearing other teams talk about the Royals. You know, other teams are saying, boy, when's Hosmer going to take off? Or when's Billy going to take off? When's Mike Moustakis going to take off? And it's one thing to be optimistic about your own team. Every team should be that way. They need to be. But when you start hearing from other teams and other teams that are contending teams and they expect Billy Butler to hit better Eric Hosmer Mike Moustakis Nori Aoki three balls one strike now and Angel Pagan and we don't know how long this is going to last hopefully it lasts for quite a while but this is what the Royals had in mind coming out of spring training that what we've seen over the past three weeks is what they're capable of on offense. Billy's always been a better second half hitter with average and with home runs and normally the second half has fewer games than the first half. So to have numbers like that is even more impressive. So not making a significant move 
before the first trading deadline seemed to put a charge into the Royals offense. Three yeah. and two. And I, I think they're stepping up. They're responding. And that's what you said. I remember when we went on the air the day of the deadline when the deadline had passed you said that you know, the guys should hold their heads high in the clubhouse. They should stick their chests out that the front office felt like they have enough in that lineup. That's some confidence that's sent right from the top on down. Now it's up to them to look at themselves in the mirror and, and do what they're capable of doing. And they've done it for the most part. They're a little bit more selective at the plate. Crawford took off. And Fonte makes the play on Pagan, who's 0 for 3, 2 down. Parents, don't forget to reserve your spot in the best kids club in Major League Baseball. Sluggers Blue Crew send the kids back to school with some Royals shirts and jerseys. Royals cap for just $25. The kids will get a limited edition T-shirt cap. Two free tickets, a stadium tour, free passes to the outfield experience, and much more. It's valued at over $100, and you can get it for $25. Visit Royals.com slash Blue Crew to sign up. Hunter Pence single to right in the third inning. And what ended up being a big play in the Giants two run third. On a base hit to right field he slid in safely at third. But then his momentum took him off the bag. Mike Moustakis kept the glove on him. Bill DePlissy in the Royals video room noticed that, called the dugout, and the Royals got a big out. Aoki makes the play in right field. Vargas has a scoreless fourth inning after allowing a leadoff single. And we head to the bottom of the fourth in a 2 2 tie. Pence back in the outfield and of course we have shown you these Hunter Pence signs that have emerged over the last week. Let's take a look at some of them out here. We've got Hunter Pence likes fish sticks. Okay, not bad. Hunter Pence thinks Alcatraz is still active. All right, that's definitely good. Hunter Pence is a cat person and then here we are in KC Mo. Hunter Pence thinks he's in Kansas. Although I got one for you too, guys. Does this one work out for you, HUD? Ah, Hunter Pence <laughs> thinks the moon is a planet. Oh, I love We it. were going to go with Santa and elves and gnomes, but we went with this. Ryan, if I could ask you one person in the community relations department who would have put that together for me, who would it be? Impeccable handwriting, attention to detail. Laura Grosshands? Absolutely. Okay. You know, she could have been done with it in 10 minutes, but she spent some time, and then she was worried she wasn't going to be able to fill in all the letters. I <laughs> wanted to make sure it got on the air. So, yes, Hunter Pence thinks 
the moon is a planet. I this one it. is going back to you in the booth, HUD. Yeah, these folks are geeked. That's right. Thank you, Joel. Billy hit a two run home run in the first inning off of Bumgarner, his seventh of the year. Giants tied it with two in the third inning. RBIs for Arias and Duffy. Chopped to short. Crawford got a nice big hop and he's got time. One down. Bumgarner is 25 years old. He was the Giants first round pick in 07. Got to the big leagues in 09. Pitched in four games. So his first full season was 2010. He pitched so well that he went 2 and 0 in the postseason and the Giants won the World Series. That year. Got a five year contract extension. After the 2012 season when the Giants won their second World Series in three years. One of the best lefties in the National League. No doubt about it. He's one of the best on the road as well. Crawford got a little lazy there. Didn't have to backhand that. And Alex is on with one out. That'll be his 17th air. It's a high number. Okay, he, he's his feet weren't moving. He was waiting for the ball, and the ball ended up playing him. Lots of times, if you're an infielder and you're you're not moving your feet when the ball gets to you to your glove, you're going to struggle with the pickup. So when we say one of the best pitchers. In the National League, here's what we mean. Most wins since 2010. That was his first full season, and only Clayton Kershaw has more wins, and it's only two more wins. He has had three seasons with 13 or more wins. He had 16 in 2012 and as HUD pointed out very early in the game he's one of the best in the National League on the road. Which is a little bit of a surprise because he pitches in a very pitcher friendly ballpark AT&T. Yeah, he's a nine and two record to go with that one point five ADRA. That's in 13 road starts. Lorenzo fly to center in the second inning. Two and one. Kane is hit in six straight and on the road trip he hit four forty four. Two out of his three homers have come off of lefties. Hasn't hit a homer since June twenty fifth. He's overdue. Two and two. From Garner out of Hickory, North Carolina. Pitch was down, maybe not a strike. Kane swings over it. Bumgarner has his third strikeout. Rarely misses up. But you still got to get him up. You, you, you got to somehow find a way to discipline yourself to lay off of those that are down below the knees. Been watching the radar gun, he's been. 91 92 93 I'll bet the hitters feel like it gets there quicker than that. It doesn't look like his fastball just jumps on the hitters. Yeah. Call a guy like that sneaky quick. 
Got that nice, slow, easy, long lever delivery. Kind of put the hitter to sleep, and then bam, that ball's right on you. Yeah. From the three quarter arm slot. Now, nice to see Eric Kratz swing at the first pitch there. Because he, he only had one swing in his first at bat. And he already had two strikes on him at that point. So you don't give yourself much of a chance. So now he's in the game. First time designated hitter in his career. It's almost like pinch hitting four times in a game. You know, he's trying to get loose and stuff, but you know, typically you're you're all loose and warm. You sit on that bike and you ride it, get a little sweat going before you your turn comes to at bat. Alex runs. He got a good jump. And the ball in on a hop. And how about Matt Duffy? Playing the bounce, getting a quick tag in time to get Alex. And that ends the inning. Oh, great catch and tag. Lions got two in the third. Three game series with San Francisco. The final game of the series is Sunday. It's also our third bobblehead giveaway. The first 10,000 fans through the gates will get an Alex Gordon bobblehead, courtesy of Pepsi. And the gates open at 11:30 for that 110 game. So make sure you arrive early. Royals.com 1-800-6 Royals for tickets. Bobo heads a beauty. We've been carrying him around on that road trip. Big curve for a strike to Buster Posey, who is singled and flied to center. This, one and one. This year, Major League Baseball. Trying something new with the replays, also eliminating any collisions at home plate. Largely because of Buster Posey a couple of years ago got plowed and blew his knee out, or was it his ankle? It was a pretty nasty shot. But 2011. This is, yeah, this is one of the reasons right here. And he was their young star catcher. And his left ankle didn't bend the right way. So that's. What they did now, some baseball purists are a little bit nervous that they're going to start making them slide into second base like they do an amateur ball straight into the base. You know, and I, I hope that doesn't happen. They've got to be able to keep the game, you know, competitive in a certain way where you can break up a double play and, and that helps you win games. Well, hit to right field, but Nori is there to make the play. Well, the thing about the Posey play. And that was 2011, one year after he was Rookie of the Year and was having a very good year before that collision. Scott Cousins was the one that knocked him out. What angered Posey and the Giants 
and a lot of people was that he wasn't really blocking the plate. And the rule now doesn't completely. Now that angle there looks like he's blocking the plate, but he's actually in front of the plate. But that he's not going for home plate right there. Are Scott you? Cousins is he was going for the catcher. He was not going for home plate. According to the rule now there was a lane for him to slide to and he didn't take the lane. He took out the catcher. He knew the ball was going to beat him there. And you know but if he's he, not blocking the plate right right. Typically but he, if you'll ask him he was not set up right. He, being on both knees right there is what he did not want because that happens and you, you get hit by a runner. He'll tell you that his position wasn't set up right but here it is again a little better look there. he had some outside he but look at look at the runner he was coming the whole way at him. Yeah see that's that's unnecessary contact and I don't care how much John Wayne you got in you that 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 was unnecessary. There was plenty of room to slide for instance Alex Gordon Alex is one of the best at it you slide way to the right of home plate and then you reach back with your left hand and it's very hard for the catcher to make that tag and. You can understand why the Giants and Posey were so upset about that particular collision. It's one thing if the catcher denies you access to home plate. Well then you deserve to get steamrolled. Going in with a shoulder. I mean he could have broken his shoulder. I mean. He could have broken his neck. I mean. Dangerous. Excellent change up. You see Morris big guy he stays off of the plate but he steps in. And that way he's able to cover the outside part of the plate. You see how far off he is he's. A big tall guy. Still one and two on Morse. Part of the Giants two run third inning against Vargas that tied the game. Singleton scored. Coming up on 100 pitches. Trying to get through five tonight. Shortest inning he's had so far was a 15 pitch fourth inning. In his first three innings, he went over 20 pitches each. Salvi wanted that one down, and it wasn't. It was in Morse's wheelhouse. He missed it. Could see his pitch breakdown tonight. Fastballs, changeup. That's those are two main pitches and the occasional breaking ball. Got him reaching. Had a changeup. Escobar throws out Morse. Vargas has his first one, two, three inning.
Royals baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. It was 75 degrees outdoors. Can you believe that on August the 8th? That was at first pitch tonight. Ned Yo says five innings is enough. Vargas over 100 pitches. So the Royals need to score here if they want to get him the win. Kratz, Mustakis, and Escobar. Curveball swung on and missed. Kratz struck out in the second inning. He was standing at the plate in the fourth when Gordon was caught stealing. One and one. What do you see a couple of pitches before Alice got thrown out. That's usually I call that a bonus at bat. You got to see two free pitches. And you got to go back and come back and start that at bat again. That's a bonus AB. Another breaking ball one and two. It's very difficult to DH. When you haven't played in, in over a week and a half. Still one and two on Kratz. Bumgarner rarely elevates, keeps everything down, likes to stay in on righties on their hands. Mixes. His cutter in and out. He typically breaks a lot of bats. Those hard cut fastballs in on the hands of the righties. Hit well to right field, but right at Pence. One down to the bottom of the fifth. During the Oakland series, we'll have our sixth and final installment of T-shirt Tuesday. So just four days away as the Royals host the A's the first 10,000 fans through the gates receive a limited edition Coffin Stadium themed shirt presented by Sport Clips the gates open at 530 that's a 710 game 1 800 6 Royals or Royals dot com slash T shirt Tuesday. HUD has already proudly gotten his T shirt. Yeah looks nice. Fresh, the Royals address on there one Royal way yeah, sports clips I sponsor. Thank you. Good looking. Mustakis really hung in there against Bumgarner in the second inning. He was down one and two. He fouled off three tough pitches and then singled to center field getting his average up over 200. One ball two strikes again. So they're not as drastically pulled over as they were now they're kind of. You got you got the second baseman. Right on the grass back there in right field. But Crawford. And Arias over there on the left side. As the shifts evolve. The new thing that we have seen isn't so new now it's a couple months old but as left hand batters started to drop down bunts or hit ground balls the other way. There would be one shift. Until one or two strikes and then they'd really go into the shift thinking that. Somebody like Moustakis isn't going to bunt with two strikes. It's that hard. And Duffy he'll have a long throw and he gets Moustakis so the shift paid off there for the Giants. And there are two down. So Bumgarner giving up those two runs in the first inning and now scoreless over the next three and two thirds. And if you've followed the Giants even from a distance, you know that their game is pitching. They play in a pitcher friendly ballpark. Won the World Series in 2010 and 2012 in the top five. And then last year, they really dropped off. And you can begin with their starting pitching. And they have since rebounded this year. 
getting their ERA almost to exactly where it was when they won the World Series a couple of years ago. And they've done that without Matt Kane. Who's on the DL and done for the year with elbow surgery. Escobar grounds out. He's 0 for 2. The Royals are down quickly in the fifth inning. Four consecutive scoreless innings for Bumgarner after the two run first. And we go back to Sunday. This was the deciding game in the Royals A series. James Shields began with five perfect innings. He handled two pop ups for a good measure. Just allowed a couple of solo home runs to Josh Reddick, and that was it. Just two runs, four hits, and eight innings. And the Royals figured to have their hands full in that series in Oakland, and they outpitched the A's, winning two games to one. And tomorrow night in game two at 610 it's James Shields against veteran right hander Tim Hudson who is eight and eight. And we welcome in Jeff Montgomery. We had a little bit of drama during that A series four perfect innings for Vargas and then the A's had the big fifth inning and then James Shields took a perfect game into the sixth. Well and James Shields looked like a pitcher on the mound out there that one of the baseball and one of the bigger games of the season so far obviously a big game to win that series in Oakland mm -hmm. and when you have your ace on the hill you like your chances James Shields came through. We were talking earlier about Jeremy Guthrie's outing last night. Fifty four pitches in the first three innings and then. 55 over the next six innings and well he just stepped on the accelerator and retired the last 19 Diamondbacks hitters. Well it's great to see him start that road trip the way he did with his first win against the A's and then finish it off last night against the Diamondbacks. But I thought the way he finished that game last night he was a guy that was in total command very confident. I like the way he was attacking the strike zone everything was moving downhill and that's a great sign when a pitcher is able to get that type of movement in that life. Fraser takes over in the sixth inning. He'll get Arias, who has two doubles in an RBI, Duffy, who has two hits in an RBI, and Perez, who's one for two. Fraser, fastball slider, occasional changeups. Bonnie, he reminds me of you. I was just going to say the same thing. But if you yeah. had given me one more pitch, I was yeah. going to say, who does he remind you of in a Royals uniform? And I think just, you know, not not really big, but very precise with his location. I mean, he could knock a fly off a quarter inch off of that plate. As good as he can dissect the outside part of the dish. Money, he don't quite have your slider, but he's pretty accurate with his fastballs. Well, he's been a guy that, you know, he's got experience. He understands what it's like. He trusts his stuff a lot. He attacks the strike zone. And like I was talking about with James Shields and and the way Jeremy Guthrie threw last night, guys are confident when he goes out there, he takes that experience on the mound, and that's one reason Dayton Moore and the Royals want to bring in a guy like a Jason Fraser. Take a little bit of pressure off of Aaron Crow and 
and he's done an excellent job. Don't believe that he's given up an earned run yet. He's given up one hit in five innings. So forget about runs. He's only given up one hit. He's been uh, very, very good at surrendering no runners that he's inher inherited either. So that's a great sign. First handful of innings. Yeah, Ned Yost brought him in in the middle of the inning. And now lately getting some clean innings. Matt Duffy just recalled from the minor leagues was one for ten before tonight and now two for two and his RBI single in the third inning tied the game at two. Even kind of sets up like you. you know, kind of the. The high set in front of his chest and a lot of guys including myself that come in and out of the bullpen you pitch exclusively from the stretch no wind up and I think that's one thing that a lot of people you know when they say you remind a guy of someone like myself that's what it is it's same style same setup but again I think I like the fact that he's aggressive on the mound and he's able to throw strikes with all of his pitches Heck yeah he's tough minded not being very big in stature you know always Having a job challenged by a, a big tall guy that threw blows, you know, 95, 96 miles an hour, he's really got to be precise. And he uses his entire body, he uses the big muscles of his body, his quadriceps, his abdominals to generate that type of force and velocity. Mm. Two strikeouts, both with fastballs with some late life. Now, does he have as many? Facial twitches as you had in between pitches. I'm not sure about that. I never really paid much attention to that. I think a lot of other people did. You were an antsy guy on the mound. <laughs> Let's see some money. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, there were, you always had a little little sniffle and you know you from what I remember and shrug your shoulders to kind of stay loose and kind of wiggle your arms and well, you got to get those back routines. and forth. Yeah. You get those routines that work, and then you want to stay with them. And, and that's part of baseball, right? As you know. That's right. Those habits. Greg Holland, he does the same thing. You see him with his shoulders. You know, he's mm -hmm. always flinching his shoulders. Off the end of the bat. Another good outing for Fraser. Five and a third innings. In nine appearances, and only one hit allowed. Happy birthday. The Royals lead 2 2 to the bottom of the sixth. Stadium. The Royals, Fox Sports, and the state of Missouri are teaming up to help you stop smoking. And for more information, call the quit line at 1 800 quit now. 
Nice crowd here tonight. Fireworks after the game. And a low scoring game. That's what we anticipated with the Royals and the Giants. Aoki showing bunt. He's been hit by a pitch and he is fouled out to left. Feels a lot more like early to mid September tonight than it does early August. That gives the pitchers a little more advantage with that wind blowing in out of the north. Now one ball one strike on Nori Aoki chatting with Royals Hall of Famer Jeff Montgomery. What has stood out for you in watching Bumgarner in person for the first time? Well, I heard a lot about him, especially about his slider. He has that real lateral movement on his pitch where it's a lot of the pitch going, say, from that first base side over to the third base side of the plate. So he gets a lot of life on the slider. He goes to it a lot, uh, mm -hmm. but he's got a very good fastball as well. When you throw in the low to mid 90s consistently, good location with your fastball, that makes that slider that much better. And I was surprised in seeing how much he throws his slider and his curveball compared to his fastball. Normally, when that's the case, a guy's getting hit. His fastball is getting hit a lot, but opponent's batting average against his fastball is just 227. Yeah, he's got a good, uh, good fastball as well, but he has great confidence in that slider. Up the middle, Crawford. Good play going to the middle and gets Ioki. He's a good fielding shortstop. And shows us right there. We hit the first out of the bottom of the sixth inning. So tonight, Vargas and Bumgarner. Tomorrow, it'll be Shields and Hudson. Sunday, Duffy and Lincecum, and then the Oakland A's. They'll bring their four best: Sonny Gray, John Lester. Scott Casimir and Jeff Samarja. The Royals missed Samarja when they were in Oakland last weekend. And the mental attitude of the Royals hitters is bring them. We're taking it one day at a time anyway. Just bring them. We faced so much good pitching this year and we beat good pitching. We're not worried. And I think when you look at that type of a uh, rotation you're going to be facing it's almost like a pitcher facing a really good offensive lineup. You can't go try to get nine guys out at once or seven guys out at once. You've got to go one batter at a time. These Royals have to go one pitcher at a time. Try to knock one guy off, get the next guy. They sit in the left field. That's a two hit game for Omar Infante. First hit for the Royals since the second inning. Starting to pick up his speed. Infante is with his bat anyway against left handed pitching. He's he's been under 200 most of the year. Now he's starting to get that average up. He came in 222. A couple more hits will get him up. Our Sonic slamming and contestant is Michael Foote from Olathe. If the Royals hit a home run in this inning, Michael wins $2,900. If the Royals hit a grand slam out of the park, Michael wins 25 grand from Sonic and the Kansas City Royals. Salvador Perez has been all over. Bumgarner's fastball. He has laced it twice. I mean, you can't hit it any better. Right at people both times. Arias guarding the line again to third. And that's where Sal lined out in the first inning. Almost pinned Arias to the left field wall. And then Sal lined out to left to Perez in the third inning. They're all playing deep in the outfield on Salvi. Off the end of the bat, smothered by Morse. No out, no out. And Infante will go to third. Well, that's baseball, HUD. You hit two rockets for outs, and you hit one off the end of the bat, and you get on base. On contact, I thought it was going to find that hole, but Morse did a nice job of, of getting into his glove, but he had more time. Salvi, he could have just picked up and got to his feet and got an out at first base, and there was no one at second base as, as the throw took Duffy off of it. Look at Infante. He's playing umpire, saying he never touched the base. He looked up, saw the ball got away. The Giants making their 74th and 75th errors on the season. 
That's an error on Duffy. Oh, and one on Billy. There are two errors on the play. First, a throwing error by Morse, which drew Duffy off the bag, and then the throwing error by Duffy, which allowed Infante to go from second to third. So that's the third error on the night by the Giants. Royals fans want to make it pay off here. Make it hurt. That will slice foul. And it's 0-2. Buster Posey with one out. He's out there talking to Baumgartner. I'm sure about where they want to locate this next pitch on him with 0-2. But really, what he's saying is we got to get him to roll into a double play. Billy Butler, he, he's grounded into 17 double plays this year. And this is the time of the game when they get to lead their dangerous. The Royals are. Herrera, Davis, and Holland. Well, he's homered, and he's grounded to short. And Bumgarner trying to repeat what he did to Billy in the fourth inning, getting that ground ball. That pitch was up. Well, Posey wanted that. Posey started to come out of his crouch as that pitch was coming in. Well, you better make sure when you're Pitching Billy the way he's going right now. If you're going up there, yeah, now he's been really short to the ball and he's not missing many of those. Billy's home run in the first inning was a no doubter. Going to try to waste a slider here down low. No, staying up. Mark Ripperger is the first base umpire, two and two. You guys, that's the thing I've noticed about Billy Butler over these last several weeks is the fact that. He's not missing those good pitches to, to hit and to drive, and when he gets them, normally he's getting that lift on him. As a result, we're seeing the home runs. Grounded through the right side. The Royals take the lead. Billy Butler has driven in all three. So the defensive laps. Turns into the go ahead run. You're playing winning baseball like the Kansas City Royals are. You're getting bounces like that, but you're also making it happen. Billy Butler, great two strike approach. They're going to sit up away on him. He goes, All right, I'll go that way. And that's what he wanted. He wanted to keep his hands from rolling over and hitting a ground ball to the shortstop. So he went the other way, found a hole, and now making him pay for those. Two errors on one play. Ooh, man, Salvi did a good job of staying out away from that. The ball hits the runner. That's a dead ball. Batter's out. You know, we should point out, too, and we mentioned this earlier, Brandon Belt, who is a very good defensive first baseman, was just put on the disabled list today. So you got a left fielder playing first base. And when things are going your way, you're hitting the ball to the guy that's out of position. Billy Butler carrying the load just like Moose did two games ago. At the knees for a strike. Alex is 0 for 2. He reached on an air back in the fourth inning. Fielding air by the shortstop Crawford. Two on, one out. Slice to left. It's a long run for Perez, and he didn't get it. Perez scores. Butler to third. He's out. He was almost passed by Alex Gordon. So, Billy's not the fastest guy in the league, but still didn't get first to third on that play and there are two down the Royals now lead 4 2 great piece of hitting there that's an inside fastball and he's able to stay inside of it that's a long one the ball was slicing away 
from the left fielder. He couldn't glove it. Now Gordon basically is pushing Billy. Billy, obviously a slide would have been the, the proper thing if he would have slid to the left over there. And there was no contest. But we've got two runs. And because Billy is out at third base, it goes down as a single. Now Kane shoots it into center field, handled by Pagan. Billy Butler is driven in three. Alex Gordon drives in a run. So the Royals take a two-run lead to the back end of their bullpen. Two. And hey, Royals fans, Jeter and the Yankees will be at Kauffman Stadium August 25th. This will be Derek Jeter's last regular season game ever in Kansas City. And Tickets for Less is your trusted source for the perfect seat. Tickets are scarce, but Tickets for Less has those hard-to-get lower-level seats. The time to buy is now before they are gone. Call Tickets for Less or visit ticketsforless.com. You see what we did there? Regular season, because who knows? Maybe we'll have Yankees and Royals in the playoffs. Hey, guys, I got a pretty good one, too, on uh, Hunter Pence. This one sent in that Hunter Pence thinks Holland is a country. We might see the Royals closer later for his 100th career. All right, Joel, we'll begin with a Chevy call to the bullpen in the seventh inning. Kelvin Herrera, Monty, he's not quite at the level as Wade Davis and Greg Holland this year, but he's getting there, and now... Ed Yost, as he tries to shorten each game, get it to Davis and Holland. Now it's about getting it to Herrera, Davis and Holland. Right now, if these starting pitchers or the middle guys get it to the seventh inning, the chances of winning are enormous. And Kelvin Herrera has really evolved over this last year plus as far as a pitcher, keeping the ball in the ballpark. Last year early had that difficulty, but he established that breaking ball and it's made him such a much better pitcher. Dyson in center field. Kane to right. Herrera, explosive fastball. Four seam and two seam. When he two seams it, that ball just rips across the plate. He's got an excellent change up to go with that, and he's developing a little overhand curve. It's not a, a flat slider like it was last year. And, you know, he, he may not have the strikeouts, but. He's locating much better. He's staying on both sides of that plate, and he's not throwing strikes out over the middle. That's what hurt him last season. Yeah, and I think one thing, too, as far as his development as a major league pitcher, he's now not concerned about the strikeout. He's worried about getting outs. And that's the evolving of, of a young pitcher anyway. Young hitters, you know, it takes time for them to learn. Herrera, you know, his first couple of seasons, he, he looked a little nervous. You could tell his body language. You know, he didn't know how to walk off the field. He'd take his hat off and carry it. I mean, you know, he, he was just trying to find himself. And now I think, you know, he realizes the weapons that he has 
And that strong right arm, he's got plenty to get big league hitters out late in games. Right, and once you establish the confidence you can do that, you're no longer fearful of pitching to contact, and you do a much better job of it. You have shorter innings as a result. You're able to last a lot longer. That came up and got Sal on the right hand. We're seeing Duffy do the same thing. He's not realized now it's about getting outs and it's about, you know, keeping your pitch count down. So he's not trying to pull it by everybody. Let's see how Salvi's right hand absorbed that one. Well, at least he got it on the bounce. Fingers are extremely important. For baseball players, man, your hands, you got to have every bit of them. You know, ask Eric Hosmer. Chiefs had their first preseason game last night, and you get into that football mentality. And Alex Smith. Might be the only guy in the roster who might miss a game because of a sore finger or a bruised hand. Everybody else is going to grind through it. Not in this game. Look at the movement on that pitch. 98 miles an hour, and it was riding away from Crawford. Good start for Herrera in the seventh inning. What a luxury for Ned Yost to have three guys at the back end of his bullpen. That all throw upper 90s and Herrera 100. And their secondary pitches are almost as good. They have very good command, shortens the game. One of the reasons why the Royals are where they are and possibly could make the postseason for the first time in 29 years. If you think back to that first month of the season when the bullpen was having its issues at times, Ned Jones kept saying it's going to evolve, it's going to eventually happen. We're going to figure these things out. Who's going to pitch in what roles? Because they had to replace Luco Tabor. Now Wade Davis is that guy, and Kelvin Herrera's emergence as that seventh inning guy. It's quite a luxury to have three arms that you can bring in and essentially shorten the game to six innings. Bergan is 0 for 3 tonight. 99 with some movement. 0 and 2. That's the two seamer. I was talking to Herrera on the road trip this past week. And I said, the four seam, that's the one you throw at 101. He goes, yeah, but my two seamer, he goes, I like to start it inside the plate and it finishes off. And I like to stay elevated on left handed hitters. It looks good, but they can't square it up and put it in between the lines. They can foul them off just like Pagan just did with that two seamer at 99. So he's calling for it again. Triple digits, one ball, two strikes. With Fraser's scoreless sixth inning, Royals bullpen has given up four runs in the last 24 innings. Face it into right field. That was a changeup. Pagan is on for the first time. One on, one out. Sometimes that speeds the bat up. On a left handed batter, when you throw that change up after all them pitches in the upper 90s, and he throw that change up, then he's at 90. That's a that's a good hitting pitch. If you get an elevator, you're essentially doing that hitter a favor by speeding his bat up after seeing all those fastballs that are around 100 miles an hour. And again, you're playing right into his hand, doing him a favor, allowing him to get the bat head out. Hunter Pence. He does nothing orthodox except play the game hard. You see his swings as the runner goes. So the Giants avoid the double play, but they get Pence. He takes as goofy a swing as you'll ever see in between pitches. But it works. It works when he gets in the batter's box. Yeah, it's like he's swinging underwater or something. Yeah, or you know, <laughs> trying to swat a hornet away that's down around his ankles. Well, he does wear socks with his sandals. Yeah, look, he chokes up on the bat. Okay, he, he's going to hit it wherever it's pitched. Good balance. A, a funky little flamingo kick. He slings that leg. He doesn't pick it up. He just slings it back. And he had a hard time getting out of the box. Now watch this swing. 
before he gets in the box. <laughs> really? <laughs> that looks like an emergency hack. Why would you practice that? Maybe he wants to get the bad swings out <laughs> of his system before he gets in there. Because <laughs> that's not pretty. That's one thing I would always look at it when the guy's on the on deck circle taking his swings. I figure if he takes his swing, that's kind of where his sweet spot is. That's what he's wanting to see. So I try to stay away from that area. I don't know if I'd want to stay away from that area. Wherever that area is. <laughs> But he can play, and the fans love him. Now Posey at the plate represents the tying run and chops it out to Escobar. Kelvin Herrera gets the job done. Two scoreless innings for the Royals bullpen. Stretch time at Coffin Stadium. The Royals lead the Giants 4-2. As promised earlier in the game, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Billy Butler doing it again. They got to have this guy, I'm telling you, and he's realizing that, and he's recognizing his pitch. 2 nothing, And his first at bat in the first inning. And then, wasn't done. He said, I'm going to shorten up my swing, try to find a hole on the right side. And he did it. Stay hot, Billy. Got three out of the four RBIs tonight. Billy now has... 11 hits in his last 19 at bats. Bumgarner stays in for the seventh. Coming up on 100 pitches. He'll get Kratz, Moustakis, and Escobar. And Kratz is down 0 1. One ball, one strike. Similar to games in Arizona. Royals have the lead. The opponent has had more opportunities. Giants have four more hits than the Royals. They have left five more runners on base. Two and one on Kratz. Royals took advantage of a couple of errors in the sixth inning to push across one of their two runs. Two and two. 
Eric Kratz hit a frozen rope his last time up to Hunter Pinson right. Struck out his first time up. Old foul again, and it's still two and two. That's that slider to the back leg of the righty. He had a long first inning, and the Royals got two on Billy Butler's home run. He's been pretty pitch efficient, very pitch efficient since then. And a base hit into left field. Kratz has his first hit. The Royals have the leadoff man on. And that ball stayed up. It wasn't like the previous pitch. And Kratz did a nice job of staying with it. He had to wait a couple of clicks. And it was out over the plate. It was down, but it wasn't in. He's able to read it. Trusted his hands. Great hitting position. Mike Moustakas has had two good swings against Bumgarner tonight. And there's a third good swing, but he hit it right to Arias, and the Giants will turn that into a double play. Right idea. His approach looks really good against the lefty tonight. You can join your fellow Royals fans at McFadden's located in the Power and Light District for the official Royals watch party on Wednesday, August 20th. The Royals will be in Denver playing the Rockies. The party starts at 730 with a special appearance from the K crew and former Royals pitcher Dennis Leonard. Plus all fans in attendance have the chance to walk away with many great prizes including tickets to an upcoming Royals home game. Admittance to the party is free. So we hope to see you there. Wednesday, August 20th, 7.30 at McFadden's. One ball, one strike. A little over 28,000 here tonight. Boy, what a great night to be outside, especially this time of year. 75 degrees at first pitch. 28,307 at Compton Stadium tonight. One and two on Escobar. And a slider strikes him out. Four for Bumgarner. We go to the eighth. Wade Davis is ready. The Royals lead 4 2.
Carlos Beltran leading the way with the Grand Slam. Boston and L.A., Chicago and Seattle just underway. Our Mazda game break has north of the border. Casey Jansen has a 4-2 lead. Gave up a two-run homer to Nick Castellanos. Next batter, Eugenio Suarez goes deep for the game winner. And so the Tigers storm back with three runs in the ninth inning. So at the moment, they are three games ahead of the Royals who could jump back to two and a half back with a win here and Wade Davis on the hill. Thank you Joel. Here's Wade Davis and we look at the Academy Sports and Outdoors leaderboard. Scoreless inning streaks current scoreless inning streaks and of the top six in the American League the Royals have two. Davis had a longer scoring streak than the one that he has currently right now but that was broken he went 22 and a third innings and now he's given up just one run in his last 38 innings one ball one strike against Pablo Sandoval Sandoval Morse and Arias coming up and the first two hitters that Davis will face have a combined 29 home runs. And as we pointed out earlier in the game, this is Sandoval's better side of the plate. Hip free swinger. Davis gets it done with that high riding fastball, mid to upper 90s. Cut, cuts that fastball. Has a nice little overhand curve. We have a tough time hitting that pitch. Two balls, two strikes. Might just stay up there again. You got the home plate umpire ducking. <laughs> well, Kerwin, you know that's he, not in the strike zone. No, but those high, those high ones like that, if the hitter does get it, he barely ticks it and it picks up speed. And something tells me Danley, he's been on the other end of those before. Three and two. Sandoval looking for that fastball. We'll see if Davis cuts it or maybe even pulls an overhand curve on him. As you know he's setting all over a fastball here, three and two. That pitch was up, not as high, and Sandoval serves it into center field for a leadoff single. That's his second hit. He made him earn it. Took his bat from him, broke it. I think Morris has been watching Hunter Pence. I know. You see that? It was like a uh, like a yoga move, he wasn't looked, it? He looked like a flamingo. Fastball is in there. Okay, now we saw Hunter Pence. Watch Morris. Tell me where he learned this one. From Mr. Miyagi and the Karate Kid. <laughs> That's special. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Giants got two runs in five innings against Vargas. Fraser turned in a scoreless sixth. Herrera a scoreless seventh. And that's a base hit into center field. So the two power guys in the lineup produce singles. And two on with nobody out. Take a look at tonight's AT&T fan photo of the night. 
And it comes from Jiggy. Which I think is a nickname. Maybe not. That is mother and daughter. And we thank you for the Casey fan photo for tonight. So two on two out. No need to panic with Wade Davis on the mound. Even though the Giants will send up Joe panic. <laughs> well Joe is going to have an opportunity to try to move the runners here. I'm sure they put him in there to bunt. I will see he's one for two as a pinch hitter. Now they're going to be swinging. One ball, one strike. Panic does not have a sacrifice bunt yet this year. He has played in 28 games and has 92 at bats. 24 hits, 21 singles. And now two balls and one strike. Right by him in 98. Two and two. Davis has induced two double plays this year. It looked like that. He cut that ball a little. Coming in, that's really difficult to square that up. Back with a fastball. 98 again and it's fouled away. Panic at some point could be an everyday player for the Giants. He was their first round pick three years ago out of St. John's University. Made his big league debut about a month and a half ago. Sandoval at second, Morse at first. First time the Giants have had two runners since the third inning. How do you lay off that pitch? That's right where Davis and Perez wanted it, three and two. You can tell by the Royals in the outfield there that they know that he has been mostly a singles hitter. So Dyson in particular in center and Gordon in left are very shallow. Davis, he's got to know there's no chance the runners will be moving. With nobody out three and two. Bochi doesn't want a chance for a strike him out, throw him out, take him out of a potential big inning. Just to throw a nice little knee high strike. Maybe he can get a ground ball out of it. No free passes. Fouled away again. Royals scored two in the first inning on Butler's home run. The Giants scored two in the third to tie it. The Royals got two in the sixth. Butler again driving in a run and Gordon driving in the other. The Royals are 44 and two this year when they lead after six innings. Swing and a miss. Got him with a hard slider, a hard cut fastball down and in. That was a wicked pitch. And that's Davis's first out of the inning. Man. Yeah. That's try and hit that. That's that cutter. It, it, it's a really good. Now the less velocity, the more break. Remember the Royals, Fox Sports, and the state of Missouri are teaming up to help you stop smoking. And for more information, call the quit line at 1-800-QUIT-NOW. 
So 44 and two when the Royals Thank lead you. after six. 48 and one when they lead after seven. Now two on one out to Matt Duffy who has two hits and an RBI that was against Vargas. Rounded right to Infante out at second double play another scoreless outing for Wade Davis he works around the two singles. The Royals head to the bottom of the eighth inning with a two run lead. <laughs> Waiter check please. Is brought to you by Thoroughbred Ford. The selection is bigger and the prices are lower at Thoroughbred Ford. Four two Royals. Bumgarner stays on. He has thrown 107 pitches. Gerard Dyson hits for the first time. Dyson came on defensively in the seventh inning. One ball, one strike. Travis Ishikawa, and he was running for Morris right before Duffy grounded into the double play. So Ishikawa to first. Joe Panic, who pinch hit in that top of the eighth inning, goes to second, and Matt Duffy, who was at second, shifts over to third. Grounded two third and Duffy just in time to get Dyson good play on a fast runner. It's exactly what Dyson wants to do make some contact on that ground. Duffy having a nice game defensively. Ishikawa gets out there with his stride just in time. Duffy made a couple of nice plays at second base. Now he's over there at third base showing his his skills. Two hits and two runs tonight for Omar Infante. Two and zero from Bumgarner, and it's very typical for him to be there until the very end. He is in the top five in innings pitched in the National League. 
He is making his 25th start this year. He only has three no decisions. So he rarely puts the fate of the game in somebody else's hands. Two and two on Infante. Former Royal J.C. Gutierrez warming up in the right field bullpen. Greg Holland getting ready for the ninth. And the Giants are scheduled to send up Juan Perez, Brandon Crawford, and Angel Pagan. Chop to Crawford. He gets a big hop and throws in time. Two down. Well, you can catch a full day of baseball tomorrow on Fox Sports 1 and Fox Sports Kansas City. On Fox Sports 1, it's a doubleheader as the Indians take on the Yankees, followed by the Cardinals and the Orioles. Coverage for that begins at 11.30. And on Fox Sports Kansas City, it's game two with the Royals and the Giants. Our coverage tomorrow begins at 5.30. Saturday baseball on Fox Sports 1 and Fox Sports Kansas City. James Shields tomorrow and Tim Hudson. It'll be our pitching matchup for game two. And if the Royals can hang on tonight, tomorrow the Royals will be going for their sixth consecutive winning series. Fouled back by Sal. Sal is 0 for 3. He reached on an air in the sixth inning and came around to score. Otherwise, he has lined out twice against Bumgarner. Good slider, 0 and 2. Yeah, man, his, his fastball slider combination with a few cut fastballs in there has been really all he's needed. He hadn't thrown too many changeups at all. One ball, two strikes. Royals have played a sharper game tonight. And the Giants have. The Giants have committed three errors. The Royals have committed one. And you have to remember that it was a late night. The Royals landing at about 3.10 in the morning. Rushing home to try and get some sleep and get back to the ballpark. Still one and two on Sal. Ron Mayhay. That right away, HUD. The answer to our Sprint family question of the day. The last... Time the Royals and Giants played was here in 2008, and the deciding game was won by Ron Mayhe. Seven percent went with Yasuhiko Yabuda. This is the fourth series between the two teams. The Royals have been to San Francisco once. San Francisco has been here twice, and the Royals have won all those series, two games to one. Still one and two on Sal. Sal, he just wearing down Bumgarner. The Royals are four and one in the last five games when facing left-handed starters. The win tonight would make them five and one. And they've all been really solid lefties. Two balls, two strikes. 121 pitches for Bumgarner. And that's a season high for him. He is coming off a shutout. That was at the Mets on Sunday, but as we were telling you early in the game, he did that with 94 pitches. He's a big, strong guy. His career high for pitches is 124. 6'4, 235 pounds. Still two balls, two strikes. Salvi so getting his money's worth. Six five, two thirty-five. 
He goes. Big boy. Slider in the dirt. As soon as Sal left the dirt, he's out. So Bumgarner ends his outing with a strikeout, his fifth. Greg Holland on with the Royals' two run lead. Well, here he is, the American League leader with 32 saves. Greg Holland on for the ninth inning. And the Giants were scheduled to send up Juan Perez, but instead, Holland will see Gregor Blanco, one time Royal. Followed by Brandon Crawford and Angel Pagan. Three scoreless innings so far turned in by the Royals bullpen. Fraser, Herrera, and Davis. And Blanco hits it right to Infante. One pitch, one away. Blanco had been three for four off of Holland before that at bat there. So he was pretty comfortable, but he was guessing first pitch fastball got in on him. Holland closed out the game on Wednesday. He gave up a run in the ninth inning. And the Royals had just added on a run in the top of the ninth. Strike to Crawford. Holland not only leads the league with 32 saves, he also has the best save percentage in the American League. 32 out of 34, that is 94.1%. Oh, and two to Crawford. Mid to upper 90s with that fastball, slider, split finger, all of them lethal. One ball, two strikes. Royals have been so good on the road this year. And they just finished that five and one road trip. They are trying to get back above 500 at home with a win tonight. Salvi wants this pitch down. 
And it is. Two down in the ninth inning. San Francisco Giants are finding out what the back end of that bullpen is all about. Kelvin Herrera, Wade Davis, Greg Holland, three scud throwing relievers that throw hard and got great secondary pitches makes it tough to hit. And with the Royals having the lead after the seventh or even after the sixth now, very difficult to beat him. Joe told us that Detroit has already won, so the Royals would stay two and a half back in the Central if Holland can close it out. One and one on Pagan. Two and one in the wild card. The Royals are a half game in front of New York. They have won. A half game or were a half game ahead of Toronto. They have lost. And a half game in front of Seattle. Seattle's still playing. They're at home in the fourth inning. No score with the White Sox. Pitch was way in on his hands. Two balls, two strikes. That's about all you can do with a pitch like that. Better believe it. Just fight it off. Foul. Royals players coming tonight getting what they've expected from the crowd. Beautiful. Just under 30,000 here at the K and men I'll tell you they're into it. They're vocal passionate fans. Down to first. Here they come. For the first time this year, the Royals are eight games above 500. Greg Holland picks up career save number 100 in the Royals.